What are the effects of crew size and arrival time on the successful outcome of a call to a residential fire? A landmark study by a partnership of fire safety researchers provides answers based on scientific investigation. This study is a landmark study because it's the first time uh, that in a single set of experiments uh, we've been able to design and control for the effects of different fire uh, service crew sizes, the uh, di different times that the apparatus arrive on scene, and their effect on the fire growth rate and the survivability within a residential burn structure. It's very important that we bring all the players together and all the leadership roles in a project like this so that we have the credibility and the validity of the outcome of the study that would be accepted uh, universally. The study is important because the U.S. has a serious fire problem. Uh, our fatality rates are almost twice as large as the fatality rates in other industrialized nations. Even as the fire service has taken on more duties, EMS, hazmat, acts of terrorism, its core mission remains protecting lives and property from the effects of fire. In the U.S., firefighters respond to more than 1.5 million fires. These fires kill nearly 3,500 civilians and injure more than 17,000 and result in 118 firefighter line of duty deaths. Most firefighters that are injured or killed are killed at residential fires. That's what we go to the most of. Now there are scientific data to help fire chiefs and community leaders make good staffing and deployment policy. We never as fire chiefs had a real great tool to say, here's empirical evidence. Well, now we have something. The NIST report on residential fire ground experiments answers four key questions. How do crew size and stagger affect overall start to completion timing? How do crew size and stagger affect the timings of task initiation, task duration, and task completion for each of 22 carefully defined fire scene tasks? How does crew size affect elapsed time to achieve entry into the structure, water on the fire, and ventilation? How does the elapsed time to achieve the national standard of assembling 15 firefighters at the scene vary between four-person and five-person crews? One of the, the factors that we've had issues with when we get at the local level is actually being able to prove scientifically why we need more staffing or why we need the deployment we do based upon the risk that we're protecting. This is just one piece of the entire study which is intended to get to a community risk model. And what this did was it took all of those tools consistently brought them into a research environment with different staffing levels and then measured the outcomes. For the fire ground field experiments, NIST and the study partners designed and built a 2,000 square foot burn structure to approximate a single family home. Over 60 full scale fire experiments were conducted in order to determine the impact of crew size, first due engine arrival time, and subsequent apparatus arrival times on firefighter safety and effectiveness. Each crew performed a series of 22 timed tasks while researchers measured interior temperature and toxicity. What you are about to see is a side-by-side -side comparison of how two different sized crews performed.
The study shows the profound difference even one crew member can make. What we have known intuitively is now confirmed in science. Community leaders now have empirical data on which to use to make the right choices for their communities. Response time, while important, is far from the whole story. We really need to talk about reflex time, and reflex time includes setup time. Setup time is what the firefighters do after they arrive at the scene. They connect to the hydrant, they stretch the hose, they put their equipment on, and they open the nozzle. This research gives local communities and fire chiefs the science and technology that justify their staffing needs uh, when it is the goal and expectation of a community for a fire department to reduce fire loss. Of particular note are the following fire scene tasks performed at a low hazard residential structure fire. Four person crews completed all the tasks on the fire ground an average of seven minutes faster than two person crews did. That's nearly 30% and the four-person crews were an average of 5.1 minutes or 25 percent faster than the three-person crews. These are critical differences when lives are at stake. Three-person crews were 10 percent faster than two-person crews in getting water on the fire. Four-person crews were 16 percent faster. And the five-person crews were 8 percent faster than the four-person crews and a full 22% faster than two-person crews. In terms of firefighter safety, this means a five-person crew begins putting water on a fire that's about 1.1 megawatts in size, which is equivalent to an upholstered chair burning at its peak. The slower time of a two-person crew means it faces a fire double that size and much closer to a flashover state. When a fire reaches this size, the probability of moving beyond the room of origin increases dramatically if there is a nearby fuel load to support it. In the test situation, the four-person crews completed laddering and ventilation, necessary for occupant rescue and firefighter safety should they need to bail out of a second-story window, 30% faster than the two-person crews and 25% faster than the three-person crews. I've been in the fire service 40 years and I've waited for a study like this, believe it or not, because I came from a department where they say, hey, we can do it with two on a ladder truck. We have so many tasks to complete. It, it, it really takes a, a crew of, of folks to do the job. Test results show that the three-person crew started a primary search and rescue 25% faster than the two-person crew. In the same structure, the four- and five-person crews started a primary search 6% faster than the three-person crews, and they were 30% faster than the two-person crews. In this case, a 10% difference was equivalent to just over one minute, a critical number when considering toxicity and fire growth. In comparing four- and five-person crews collectively to two- and three-person crews, the average time difference to stretch a hose line to the fire to conduct suppression was 76 seconds. Comparing all crew sizes to a two-person crew, the differences are even more distinct. A three-person crew could stretch a hose line 57 seconds faster than a two-person crew. A four-person crew was 87 seconds faster than a two-person crew in completing the same task. And most notably, a five-person crew was more than two minutes faster at stretching a hose line than a two-person crew. NFPA 1710, the standard for fire ground operations, deployment, and safety, requires an effective response force of 15 firefighters on a low-hazard structure fire. The five-person crews assembled an effective response force three minutes faster than the four-person crews. The study protocol included a typical first alarm deployment of three engines and a truck. Therefore, the two and three person crew scenarios never equaled 15 and were unable to assemble enough personnel to meet this standard. The test simulated standard fires using either a slow, medium, or fast growth rate. The fires grew exponentially with time. The test assumed rescue of an occupant unable to walk located in an upstairs bedroom. Regardless of fire size, toxicity experienced by the occupant at the time of rescue varied significantly, 
depending on the arrival times of the different sized crews. The test clearly showed that two-person crews could not complete essential fire ground tasks in time to rescue occupants without subjecting them to an increasingly toxic atmosphere. Larger crews can rescue most occupants before they experience the worst effects of atmospheric toxicity, particularly with slow and medium growth rate fires. This landmark study considered the most common low-hazard residential structure fire encountered in the United States and establishes the baseline science for resource deployment. Future research should consider medium and high-hazard structures including multiple family residences and commercial properties. Complete details of the experimental design and results of this study are available online at www.nist.gov search Technical Note 1661 or at www.firereporting.org. In this tough economic times, it's real easy to say we can cut people, but the fires burn just as hot, the fires uh, have, are just as unsafe, and people die in fires just the same as they do when the economy is robust. Now we have some empirical data that says there is a significant difference in the level of efficiency, but more importantly, in the safety of firefighters as well as the community at large. We call on every fire chief in America to read this report.